So Owen is here because we're going to do our 2018 awards. Let us know your thoughts on all our social channels. Do leave a comment down below and we will try and read them out on air. So we're going to keep it straightforward. I'm going to get your nominations and then I'll decide which is the winner. <laughs> so first up, team of the year. So this was a World Cup year, a brilliant Champions League, a dominant Manchester City, teams dominant across the continent. What do you think, Steve-O? Um, I thought about this long and hard um, and I'm going for Croatia. And I just think because, you know, when you look at the squad of players, the team of players they had, it was just going to have the team in the final, Subasic for Schalke, Lovren, Vida, Strinic, like that back five alone, to get them to a World Cup final. I know ultimately they were beaten by France, but France were a fantastic team, really good team. The likes of Rebic, Modric, Rakitic, they were brilliant. And I think they gave well, us... literally a question on the crappy quiz last week. Adrian <laughs> Barry got asked, name as many of the Croatian team that started the World Cup final as okay, possible. Right. Many that do you think you named? Uh, two. You're far too generous. <laughs> Modric. <laughs> uh, 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 just the one. Uh, thankfully, that crappy quiz never went out. <laughs> 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 that just didn't. We just didn't put that out. It made the edit. It was. It, it was just too too bad. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why it's called the crappy oh, quiz. Though. Quiz. Well, yeah. well, look. Yeah. I, I listen. I just think Croatia, and they just gave us some really good entertainment. I think through that World Cup, really, really good side. Um, so yeah, going for Croatia. Phil. Well, I almost agree with Steve-O, but then I think of the team that beat them. And it's hard not to give Team of the Year to the team that won the World Cup. There was a lot of pressure on them. They weren't always the easiest in the eye, but then they had their moments where they were brilliant. Uh, think of the Argentina game and you know the, the World Cup final as well. So I would go for France. Okay. Own. How many exactly left me a lot to work with here, lads? <laughs> it doesn't have to be an international team. You yeah. can go for Dundalk if you want. It could do. I, I'm going to go for Real Madrid just because of uh, the, the three peat, as I like to say, in the United States about what they did. I don't think we're going to see that again anytime soon. I think it's the crosshairs are a little bit, they're narrowed on Real Madrid at the moment, so they're not going to do it uh, this season, I don't think. And I don't think we're going to see three in a row for a long, long time again. It was just this strange scenario where a uh, dressing room full of massive egos actually like their manager. And it's it's one of those strange things that we, we just don't see anymore. And Zidane got lucky to a certain extent because he's got this huge profile. I, I don't give him too much credit for this managerial masterstroke. But also we've got to admire them in terms of team of the year for that really weird victory lap that they did uh, in, in Kiev where they all looked like they hated each other <laughs> and they just won a three in a row. <laughs> what a team. Like That is something I didn't special. hang around for their vic victory lap, funnily enough. Yeah, I was in the kitchen, yeah. I think. Get, making a drink. I wonder why, yeah, I didn't think the two lads would go with that one, now, I have to say. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm not going to go at Real Madrid because I think they were absolutely poxed to win the Champions League last season and the best Real Madrid team was the 2017 team that killed Juventus in the final. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with Croatia as well. Mm. France were expected to do brilliant. Like Croatia getting to a World Cup final. Mm. The comeback against England, just the beauty of Modric in midfield. Yeah. Got to get team of the year. Yeah. Tough luck, lads. Well done. Steve and Mandzukic. Brilliant. Goal of the year. Benjamin Pavard. I went for Gareth Bale. Not the, not the second one <laughs> in the Champions League <laughs> final. Yeah, the overhead, overhead kick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Messi versus Nigeria. Oh, yeah. yeah. John Giles, I think, went for Messi against Nigeria. Well, that's the beauty done. of it. Me and John Giles were you know, cut from the same cloth. Control, <laughs> the three touches, and yeah. bang. Yeah, and it was the ball in as well. The ball in was fantastic. And then just that, oh, the, the touch was just unbelievable. So, yeah. It, uh, Pavard's the hipster's choice, isn't it? Um. It's not really. It's that you appreciate <laughs> art. It's like you, you don't have to be a hipster to appreciate the fact that the Mona Lisa is a pretty good painting. Well, you don't look, have to be a hipster to appreciate. Far, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Pavard, he, he got the head down. There was great technique in it, but he, it was a hit and hope, you know. But where was he hoping? Where was it like? Where, <laughs> where was he hoping to go? He was hoping he would bend it in at the far post, which is exactly what he did. Yeah, well, you know, it's a it's a it's a one hit. Look, Messi showed grace, skill, everything that a footballer wants. Have I didn't? So, nah. Three worthy nominations for goal of the year, but I'm going to go <laughs> with Phil. Champions League final, yeah. biggest game of all in club football, and he scored an overhead kick. Yeah. And you're only, you're, you've That's been on the, the dream. You're on the bench as That's well. That's the dream, yeah. Yeah. right there. You know, knocking out Lionel Messi in a World Cup isn't bad. We haven't even mentioned Ronaldo. Ronaldo. You eventually win. Ronaldo's overhead. <laughs> ah. Juventus. Mm. Uh, do you have that better special. than Bale's? I do. A better goal, but I would put Bale higher than it. What about, Mo, oh, well that wasn't actually, I was going to say, Mo Salah's goal that won the Puskas award, but it wasn't scored in 2018, it was against Everton, which wasn't even his best goal 
of last season. What was his best goal of last season? His best goal of last season was maybe the goal against Spurs at the end, where he wiggled his way through. Or I always like the goal against Manchester City, the fourth goal where he chips Ederson from a million miles out. Mm. Oh, yeah, There's so yeah. many. Yeah. There was well, there was forty-four yeah. of them, was it? <laughs> All right. So goal of the year goes to Gareth Bale. Well done, Gareth. We'll be uh, across to give you your award very, very soon. So wait, are we just we like talking here pointlessly, and you, it's just your selection that's going to win? No, no. I'm. You're giving your nominations. And then I decide which oh, one right. of your three is the best. Sorry, I thought you <laughs> just kind of had a pre- the I, I thought you had like a list there already, and we're just no, no. So I, as as the um, decisive voice, I'm replacing Keith Andrews. So my vast footballing knowledge gives me the power to decide which of your three arguments. So if you want to get one selected on, make a better argument. Benjamin Pavard, the end. Not good enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> Game of the year. Japan against Belgium. Now we're going pure own hipster choice. How was that hip- hipster choice? How did you feel watching that? <laughs> did you feel enthralled? Did you feel like you were seeing something that you've never seen before? Yes, you did. I actually, th- I totally, if I, that game, I totally forgot about it when I was considering it's, it's a good shout. So good Japan shout. are 2-0 up with 20 minutes left and Belgium come back to beat them 3-2? Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember actually before the World Cup, I said Roberto Martinez and Belgium are going to be the biggest disappointment. So Japan were 2-0 up and I was thinking, Yes, Japan, see this one out. <laughs> and uh, obviously Belgium and then beat Brazil. Well, it is like that um, Super Bowl call a few years ago, the dumbest play I've ever seen, the corner kick that mm. Japan had to, to win the game. Now, at, at the time, I was kind of like, oh, you can't really bend them too much until you actually Heroic. see an overhead camera and they left two men back or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, the game yeah. of the year is the game that has you literally off your seat, yes. standing for five minutes, and you can't sit down. You haven't even noticed that you're in the middle of the room with your hands outstretched going, what is happening? Spain Portugal had that more than Belgium Japan just because it was the second day of the World Cup. Mm. I think that if Belgium Japan was on the same day and I, I was similarly unused to the exhilarating nature of the World Cup, then I would have had the exact same reaction. I think in the cold light of day, all the hours and hours I put into thinking about this, Belgium Japan definitely definitely wins on a on a pure art basis. Okay. Okay. Phil, I I've three written I down. Win here. Pick one. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna go for the Liverpool and Manchester City game, just because of what happened that day, the fact that Liverpool scored three goals in a short amount of time. City were unbeaten at the time as well. And that was nuts. That was me standing up going, what is going on here? Manchester City are being ripped apart. Mm. And of course, Liverpool gave Almost them a, blew it. Yeah. <laughs> as Van Dijk wasn't playing. Well, that was, the, uh, that was the best game I was at this year. Yeah. Without question. Liverpool yeah. four, Man City three. Steve-O, what are you going with? Um, well, I'm actually going to go for a game I was at as well because you crazy fools decided to send me over to Arsenal Spurs a few weeks ago in the Premier League oh, yeah? for my off-the-ball debut. And it was just, I suppose, being there does help because you feel the atmosphere. But what a, just what an incredible game it was. It was just, you know, Arsenal going in front. Spurs are back in front then before half-time. The Emirates was pumping, like, or throbbing, I should say, that like it never has before. Gary Breen was sitting there beside me. He said he never experienced anything like it at the Emirates. And then for those goals, like and Ter- when Torreira scored that goal, the place just absolutely lifted. And yeah, I just I, I, I thought it was an incredible game for a North London derby as well. Like that's everything you want in a derby. There was a bit of handbags. There was like it got a bit aggro at times. And Steve-O approved brilliant. handbags. This was the moment I knew Steve-O was going to make it as an off the ball commentator when they all went down and started having the old scrap. Steve was like, "It's great to see, isn't it? It's great to see." Shut up. Go on. Get in there. All right. I'm. My thoughts were Juventus Real Madrid for the final minutes, Ronaldo's penalty, oh, the yeah. proper oh, yeah. shithousery that yeah. was going on. Yeah. It was Real Madrid at their peak. I also liked the last two minutes of England Colombia. Mm. Pickford save. Pickford save and England celebrating. Yeah. And then they concede straight away. The great Yeri Mina stepping up at a crucial moment. But I am going to go with your zone. Yes, one win. Go. Belgium, Japan. One for two. Belgium one against two. Japan is our thank, game thank of the year. Yeah. Cheers. Manager All of the year. Let's, let's run through these quickly. Well, I was going to go with Slako Dalic because of what he did with Croatia. Um, but I'm going to knock a couple of points off because of how they've gone in the Nations League since it's so. all... Well, who knew the La- Nations League was going to hold so much importance? Funny. So, so I'm Ronald Koeman is your manager of the year. I'm going to come back a little bit closer to home and I'm going to go with... Keith, Martin O'Neill. Keith Long. Oh. Oh. The manager oh. of Bohemians. Are you a balls man? Who I, I'm, I'm not going to admit anything like that on live, uh, on live webcast. 
<laughs> but I think for the uh, budget that he has at Bohemians to do what they do, got to an FAI Cup semi final to keep that team up, you know, in that Premier Division against the resource that some of the top clubs have, he's doing an incredible job. And I'm going to give my manager of the year to Keith Long. Oof, Longer, you mean? Longer. <laughs> Hello? It's an obvious choice, but just the whole year, Pep Guardiola. My uh, hair. We've got an ultimate hipster, <laughs> too. Straight down the middle. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be hard to kind of be pep like so maybe in terms of manager in terms of the cult of the manager that was created this year Gareth Southgate in terms of the fact that his waistcoat became a meme <laughs> just, not just him becoming a meme his waistcoat became singing a meme. his name with the darts that's how popular he is now yeah. wow like he's had one hell of a 2018 I'm not saying he's the best it's hard to like make a case for anybody better than pep unless you go into a case by case basis and try and make well, a case well the only thing is that this time last year, everyone knew Manchester City were going to win the league. True. And that's all they did. Mm. True. They're not finishing this year top of the Premier League. So Oof. therefore... Not yet. Well, I'm, right now when we're holding these awards... Yeah, you know by, by year end. I think we're going to give it to Keith Long <laughs> because we <laughs> may it? actually be able to meet Keith Long and tell him this great thing that has happened. <laughs> what does he get? What does he win? Boxy USA biscuits. Oh, oh, nice yeah, one. there's yeah, many of them out there. Yeah. steve is going to hand deliver it <laughs> yeah. on your next pilgrimage <laughs> to uh, Bohemians. <laughs> This is a tough one. We've had a huge response to this. Many nominations. Irish Player of the Year. Now, Joseph, our producer, says that this has to be in a green jersey. Ah, well, then oh. there's one standout option. Declan Rice. Declan Rice. Oh, I, I didn't think of that one. I just went for Shane Duffy. Yeah. Yeah, the big, the big man. I'd gone for Shane Duffy. Takes well, both boxes. Can, done brilliant at club level. Could, and we, international could level. we dip down into underage and say Troy Parrott? Oh... I, I like what you so. did there. I don't think so. Why? No. Um, he's been brilliant at underage level, playing for the under-19s. and uh, This guy, is he's the next Robbie Keane. He is going to score over 100 goals. Uh, he, or sorry, I should for say. Ireland. Over 60, 70 goals. He's going to oh. win over 100 caps for Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> this lad, I'm not... Look, I'm sorry. I sorry, don't want to put too much Ali pressure Steve on the guy. You've lost the run of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to score 60, 70 goals for Ireland. Yeah, absolutely. This, this fella is... Not a hope in hell. Stuff. He's got this stuff. To be fair, a good Ireland career would be 25 goals. A very good Ireland career. Yeah. It will be, be one of the greatest Irish careers. Yeah, second highest score. What about Darren Randolph? Never does yeah, anything no, I, I thought of Randolph. Hasn't yeah. made a single yeah. mistake. It's, it's not his fault. Defenders and goalkeepers is who yeah. we're talking That's about. Cyrus Christie. Yeah. Midfielder. Like, um, no. So we go in for <laughs> Shane Duffy, or should we again give this award to Declan Rice? Because he's Maybe put it out there, tweet about it. With a shamrock emoji. I exactly. So. Irish player of the year. I genuinely think it and is. And then, if he likes that, we get a little story out of it. We're in. There you go. He'll ban open. away from it, though, is the only thing. He, he'll turn around in the queue from the passport office and say, you know what, I've changed my mind. Moment of true. the year. So I've given that to Shane Duffy. Um, I'm going to go to oh, the FAI Cup semi-final. Sorry. Sorry, I've disagreed yeah. with the Duffy thing anyway. Go on. Okay. Uh, FAI Cup semi-final, 87th minute. Uh, Daryl Lee, Bohemian's fullback, tackles Conor McCarthy to give away a penalty, which gave Cork City the chance to equalise and take the semi final to um, a replay down in Turner's Cross, which Cork ultimately won. And I just think it was a moment of the year because Irish soccer, you know, there was a chance for uh, the, uh, the this, like Cork City and Dundalk have just had a grip on this thing over the last three seasons. It was a chance for another club to break through there to get into an FAI Cup final, and that tackle. Change Bohemians hadn't been in the final since 2008. That tackle just changed things, and for me, that was the moment of the year anyway. So I'm just gonna go domestic again. Bitter, <laughs> Bill. The moment of the year, Irish football, Mick McCarthy comes back as Ireland manager, right? Wow, for better, we hope. Well, mm -hmm. yes, of course. Okay, underwhelming. Sure. I'm gonna say, Phil, mm -hmm. there's a bit, a bit of a theme running through my memories of 2018 here England beating Colombia in penalties. Really? Yeah. It was... Moment of the year, yeah. We, we, we immediately lost that stick to beat England with. We had to bury the hatchet. <laughs> My hatchet. moment of the year, which is the one that's going to win, Lars Karius in the Champions League final was the footballing moment of which the year. Moment? Yeah. Throwing the ball off Benzema. Yeah. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen happen in a football match uh, of Pickford, that magnitude. Of that magnitude. Jordan Pickford's was more ridiculous. No, no. I think Karius's was. was more ridiculous. Well... Uh, so imagine I miss imagine well. doing in that Champions League final in, your cha in a Champions League final but as an individual moment Pickford's was like absolutely ludicrous Carius's was so bizarre that 
obviously he had the ball in his hand and I, I, I think I was had a drink and I said, right, I can take a sip now because he has the ball. And then I looked up and the ball was in the net. I didn't know what happened. It's like, what? Yeah. And I was watching it with my dad. He was like, oh, you need to wait to see this. And I, so I, I can see it's the one, it was the moment where, it was a moment of madness. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Great, yeah. we'll go with Carius in the Champions League final is off the ball's moment of the year. Finally, International Player of the Year. Um, was this just World Football of the Year, Joseph? Or an Irish, it could be an Irish player. Could be an Irish player. Be Shane Duffy again. Or Non-Irish Troy Irish Player of the Year. Um, okay. I'm good. <laughs> Shane Duffy out. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight for Gary Breen here. Um, I know Gary he Breen is our Player of the Year. I'm gonna, no, no. You really enjoyed that trip to Arsenal Spurs, didn't <laughs> yeah. you? Oh, I should have done favorite co commentator <laughs> of the year and favorite pundit of the year. I'm gonna go for Real Madrid and France centre half Raphael Varane. I'm going to fight for the centre halves here because I think he was overlooked um, at the World Footballer of the Year, the Ballon d'Or Awards, and I think he should have won it. I think he's been fantastic. He won the Champions League, he won the uh, the World Cup, and he's just a superb defender who I don't think gets the credit he deserves. And I know uh, Gary was on off the ball a couple of weeks ago. Um, actually, he was on the, the night of the Ballon d'Or Awards talking to Joe, and he just couldn't believe that he was so far down the pecking order. So, yeah. Rafael Varane. So he doesn't have mad hair like David Luiz, that's why. That's, yeah. I'm going for Modric. Just Champions League winner, gets to a World Cup final. So vanilla. <laughs> but like, probably the correct choice, isn't it? No. I'm, 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 I mean, it's Kylian Mbappe. You see, I, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just messy. Let's just go Maybe messy. it's just messy. Maybe it is just messy. Uh, I've come international player of the year. But is it what you did in your international no, team world jersey? Player of the year. It's yeah. just World Player of the Year. Okay. We're literally just making this up as we go along. Off the ball on the o- door. The overseas oh, player of the year. I like what he did there. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not bad. So we've added a couple of special rounds that we're going to have to go through. Who is your favourite off the ball football pundit of the year? So is it Kevin Kilban, Keith Andrews, whose show we're currently on, Kenny Cunningham, or Gary Breen? Um. I did, like does Kenny just get, is he ruled out because he talked about food too much? Is he, do we just scratch him well, off? That's some of his away? best stuff. Yeah, I suppose. That was on Gift Grub yesterday. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah, toast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I th- look. You, we're going to offend somebody here, and I don't offend anybody because well, I love. Don't all be the afraid lads. to offend. No, no, it's fine. Listen, if. They'll like, slap you in the back. So Keith, as well. Keith Don't is coming. You know, as I say, <laughs> the hair is there. He's looking slick. Turns up on time for work, and then you've Kevin Caban. <laughs> so listen if Kev needs to up his game now's the time for you to tell him yeah. or if Gary you felt on your first cold commentary felt he maybe could have offered more yeah. I think Kev's got great work rate though in fairness I think he you know he's solid dependable um, no you want to sit in the fence yeah I'm going to sit in the fence he's literally <laughs> blown us over six times in RTBAM in the last year so he's not dependable <laughs> <laughs> um, just to put that one out there wow uh, Keith is he better presented than he's a pundit? I don't know. It's a jury oh, 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 oh. <laughs> As in, wow. no, he, is he real, he's such a good presenter that he's ruled himself out of the punditry race. Oh, that, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, who are the other two people? Kenny, Cull- Kenny Cullingham? Does he speak too much about food? And then Gary Breen? Does he not speak too much about food? So, not having either, any of them. Can we just go for Premier League lawyers, Brian Kerr? Let's go over it. Let's go for <laughs> Brian Kerr. Let's go for Brian Kerr. Brian Kerr. Brian Kerr. <laughs> unanimous choice, BK. But even what Kenny brings to the building when he comes in, that means, for me, he goes up. Like when he walks in, it just things go up a notch. We haven't had any cream cakes in a while, though. <laughs> All right, so Brian Kerr is the uh, off the ball football pundit of the year. Well done, Brian. You see, I was thinking you could say something about just don't insult Kev is the key thing because the rest of them, I'm fairly sure, aren't on social media, <laughs> so it's fine. But Kev is the only one who'll find out. So we think Kev is also great. The rest of them, whatever. Finally, one thing that's going to happen next year that nobody's expecting. So if we told you this time last year that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would be the Manchester United manager heading into Christmas 2018, we would have laughed in your face. Mm. What do you think could happen? <clears throat> um, Bohemians to win the SSE or Tristy League Premier Division. There's a trend here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is Arsene, mm. Arsene Wenger going to return to the Premier League? I was thinking he's going what to What about this one? This time next year, Brendan Rodgers will be the Tottenham manager. Oh, I think Eddie Howe's going to be the next Spurs manager. So. Oh, I'd go for Brendan Rodgers ahead of Eddie Howe. Mm. Owen, have you got that? Ireland's finishing the top two in their qualifying group for the Euros. Oh, that's a we, don't even need the, we don't even need the, the Nations League playoffs. <laughs> All right, lads, I think we're I think we done. Are we done? Keith Andrews wouldn't have stood for this absolute shambles. 
It's been, it's been great to be here, Nathan. Thanks for having us. Steve-O, you are the winner of the awards with the most correct nominations. <laughs> Owen, you came in last place. Well, that was obviously a vendetta against me. It's just the way it goes. So uh, that's us done for now. Lads, thanks a million for coming oh, in. Thank you. Thanks Happy you Christmas. Happy Christmas. We'll do it all again next year. Let's hope so. Keith Andrews Show will be back in 2019 with Keith Andrews. We'll talk to you then. Good luck.